What's up, everybody? This is Podcast Game Overs, episode 187 on the Undercover Cop. It's Thursday, August 22, 2024. I am Wasabi Ice Cream, joined, as always, by Rick. What's up? Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Rick. I'm here. You're here. We're all here to talk about some video games. Gamescom just happened, so we're going to talk about that quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, before we get into Gamescom news, let's start. We always start, man. Tell people what you've been playing. Okay, played a lot of Diablo. Yes, I've been playing quite a bit of Diablo. Not a lot, but a, a quite a bit. <laughs> and um, so I started a Barbarian. Yeah. And I, like, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the Barbarian, man. I don't know. It's like yeah. so slow. It's yep. uh, single target stuff is like really bad. Like, it's like really bad for bossing or at least the build that I'm doing. I went with like a kind of like a bleed build like focusing on a lot of bleeding damage and it's just it seems like it's bad it seems bad for uh like single target stuff but like if there's like a bunch of enemies it's really good he has like a charge ability oh my bar my bar i named him bar barbara kush uh yeah Uh, i I was wondering how you get creative with the weed names here but you you managed to bring it home (laughs) um out there and yeah, I don't know. Like the barbs is super slow. The, it's actually the barb is like way more complicated than you think. I don't know if you've yeah. checked out the barb yet, but they have a bunch of different weapon types that they can switch between, and every yeah. type of weapon does something different. Like yep. it has a different focus on like, hey, this one you know exposes vulnerability. This one gives you increased lucky hit chance. This one increases like bleeding damage. And yeah. um, each ability, you can set each ability to use a specific weapon type, uh, like based on like whatever you need it to do. And I saw that shit, and I was like, "This is more than I thought. This was just gonna be like a brainless hack and slash, in true barbarian fashion." But it's like way more complicated than uh, than I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, there's so a lot this... more to it than like I expected when I first played it. Uh, but like I kept playing the bar, I like I got my barb to like eighty. It's like level eighty now, and uh, like it's starting to get into a spot where I'm like, okay, I can see, I can see where this can end up, but it's just not. It's this. It's still not where it needs to be in terms of like killing bosses. It's just nowhere. Yeah. It's nowhere. Like its boss killing abilities is severely lacking. But if it's like a group of enemies, uh. Like, I have a charge ability that just rushes motherfuckers, and then everything explodes. And then if a boss happens to get caught in that explosion, then I can take it out really quickly. But if it's just a boss, and it's just the only enemy on the screen, it's way harder. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it, like, that ability works off of other things being there, and then, like, having, like, a chain reaction set up. So... Um, and Did then you bleeding. end up switching characters, or are you still just running with that bard or the bard well, right now? Because I already got my rogue. I already did a rogue up to level one hundred. So I was like, "Well, let's try something else now." And I tried the barb. Uh, and yeah, I'll I got that. Druid. Like, Druid's a lot of fun. Druid, yeah, I might, yeah, I might do up another one. Uh, yeah, I don't know because the barb is just not. I I, I figured because now they have the the XP buff started like yesterday. So oh yeah. Uh, I figured uh, I could just get this barb to 100 because you get stuff for like leveling everything up to 100 or you know, uh, you get the the titles and the unlocks or whatever. So I'm like, yeah. Oh, what if there's a good weed based title that I can unlock by <laughs> by playing the barb? <laughs> I'll never know. Uh, because right now my my title is like Mad Vapor. <laughs> oh, you're telling me that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, oh, well, if there's a good title I can unlock by. Yeah, I don't know why I'm doing this weed thing, by the way. Uh, it's I funny. Know, it was just, yeah, it's funny. Uh, and just to see how crazy funny I can get it. But um, yeah, Infernal Hordes, man. That Infernal Hordes mode is godlike for leveling. It's so much fun, dude. And it's so much fun. Like, yeah. Oh, man. I just unlocked the um, the actual like horde challenges. No, what am I thinking about? The Infernal Horde is like when um 
uh, the Infernal Horde is with uh, that, that, that timed event, right? For like an hour? When uh, everything's like crazy? What is it? I'm trying to remember what like the technical term for everything. The Helltide? Yeah, the Helltide. So yeah, the Infernal Horde is like the wave mode, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. That's fucking dope. Like, it's so much fun. Um, it's just incredible for leveling because it's just tons yeah. of fucking enemies. And I pop all of my, like, XP potions or whatever. You go in there, you're guaranteed at least one level, maybe one and a half per run. And then at the end of every run, you get to open these chests that has, like, a bunch of gear in them. And uh, it's just good. It's good. <laughs> Yeah, and not just that, but, like, as you're doing the run, you could, like, add modifiers to make it harder, and those modifiers give you extra pulls on those chests. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm basically taking, like, whatever gives me the most pulls <laughs> every time I run through it. Yeah. I've it's just been it's so much fun. I've just been doing it to level. I just go in there, I do, like, a tier two one, and I just, I level. I just level up. And that's why I haven't been caring about the whatever the ether drops, because uh, the the oh, gear that, that unless loot. unless you're doing the level 100 one, which is like the tier three, uh, you're not gonna get good loot out of it. You know, you're not gonna get the 925s. So, and I can't do the tier three because my barb fucking sucks. Uh, so. <laughs> I'm running through, I'm embarrassed to say I'm running through tier three super easy because uh, yeah. I wanted to do something different this this season, but I wanted to play Necromancer, but I was like, you know, I've been playing like the meta Necromancer, which is like the Bone Spear build, and I'm like, it's fun, but like I want to do something different, so I want to do like an all summoning Necromancer this season. So literally all my abilities are just like on my summons. All my uh, aspects revolve around my summons. And the only abilities I have that are like not summon related are like corpse powers, so like my corpse explosion, corpse tendril, and like uh, a curse. So I could like weaken enemies so my minions can kill them faster. And I gotta say, it's effective. <laughs> but it's really fucking boring. <laughs> it's really fucking boring. Um, because it's not as active as, like, Diablo 3 or even Diablo 2, where you can, like, choose where your minions attack. So a lot of it's just me managing resources, making sure my minions uh, are topped off, making sure, I, like, if one dies, I replace them pretty quickly. Um, if I use my summon skeleton skill and my skeletons are, like, maxed out, it summons, like, a magical a skeleton priest to, like, buff up my, my minions and heal them a little bit. So I have to fire that off every couple seconds. Uh, using corpse explosion to like kill stragglers that get away. It's a lot of like micromanaging, and it's it's not the most engaging way to play it. If I'm being totally honest. <laughs> yeah. Um. It's super easy though. My God, it's so fucking easy, dude. Like it's it's insane how easy the game is now. Like. Yeah. My my rogue is disgusting. My rogue is absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Like godlike. Yeah but um yeah i just decided to like switch it up I, I got another one to level 100 and i was like okay let me just let me do something else and i feel like the barbarian i like to play classes that no one really plays so um i thought the barbarian i thought the rogue was one of those and i thought barbarian was one of those and like the sorcerer until it got good like when they you know buffed them but um yeah it's just the barbarian Ooh, yeah. It's still a lot of fun, and it gets slept on quite a bit. And it's a lot yeah. of fun to play, depending on the build you run through. Because, like, Druid's crazy. You can play kind of however you want. You can play... If you want to do just, like, elemental magic, you can do that. Just, like, cast, like, storms and earthquakes and, like, and tornadoes and shit. If you want to focus on transforming, you can be a werewolf or, like, a werebear. Uh, there's even um, the abilities you have if you swap between, like, werewolf and werebear a lot. So, like, there, there's a lot of flexibility in how you want to play a druid. Like, it's a lot of fun. Like, yeah. it starts out super slow, but once you get some good aspects going, you kind of figure out how you want to play it, it can be a lot of fun, really rewarding class to play. Like, Necro and Druid are, like, my favorite classes right now. That was the thing that I realized with the Barbarian is that I started toward a, a certain build, and then when I went to look at the aspects, 
uh, realized that there wasn't a single aspect for the skills that I was using. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, there's not, there's I'm sure nothing there are. for these you just haven't dropped. No, there's not. Cause you can, you can search, you can search for the, uh, in the thing for the skill that you're using and like whatever has that thing in it will come up. So I literally, I searched for my skills and there was just nothing in there. You and know what like, it probably is? It's probably the uh, uniques because those don't show up in the aspect list. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's probably like some uniques you need to like really look for. Like that's that's something about the game that's like super tricky is like a lot of the really good skills are locked behind uniques, which when you get one, it's like it's fucking cool. But you don't have that flexibility, to, like pull the aspect off of that unique and put it on something else. Like you got to run that unique if you want to do it. Yeah. And a lot of times, if you're leveling up, it's impossible to, like, level up a certain build without that unique. And that's the thing. You don't know what uniques exist until either it drops yeah. or you just go to some, like, third-party website that has them all listed out. Yeah. Uh, it's, that, that's, a, that's a pain in the ass. I'll admit that's a huge pain in the ass. Um... But yeah, I don't know the barb. I, I, I kept sticking with the barb because I, I kept finding like I found one skill that was like, OK, this this is might be the turning point. Uh, but I, ju I just need the buff. It's the charge one. But it only it's only good if there's like a ton of enemies, because when I catch a bunch of motherfuckers in there, they all explode. And then if, the, if there happens to be like a boss in that explosion, they just get fucked up. But if there's no enemies, and it's just one boss that I'm fighting it's completely useless <laughs> so like that's the problem like unless the boss like spawns some ads uh i cannot get it done so yeah that's what i'm that's what i'm looking for uh but uh yeah it, it was fun once i found that out so um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna keep playing maybe maybe i'll do like a, a necromancer maybe that's not necromancer's a lot of fun like Necromancer is a lot of fun. The build I'm running with, um, I looked it up after I decided this is what I want to do. I just wanted to see like what was out there, like what people put together to give me kind of an idea. And my, my main thing too is I didn't want to like worry about uniques. I didn't want to have a build that like really needed uniques to like carry me. And the build I put together is effective but it's fucking boring <laughs> i'll admit <laughs> it's kind of boring to play through because i'm seriously just like watching my minions do everything and i'm occasionally like popping off some stuff to help them out uh. it's it's pretty boring so i might i'm debating on like once i max out this character starting up another character or just right now just changing my build completely <laughs> sure. but that's gonna be a huge pain in the ass if i do that so But yeah, again, that's gonna be a huge pain in the ass if I do that. It's gonna be a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. So that was that's Diablo. Uh, I also got uh, I got some new hardware. I yeah. got some new hardware. I got a leverless fight pad, a leverless joystick controller. Ooh, Ooh how's that going? Uh, well, I got it for for zero intention on playing fighting games with. Oh, <laughs> I got it just for DJ Max, uh, uh, which is a rhythm game, and um, it is fucking incredible. It yeah. is incredible. Uh, Good. This thing, it's like fifty bucks. This thing is like fifty bucks, and it's super small, super lightweight. Like you could probably fit this in like your your booty pocket if you got like big butt pockets. You could probably slide this in there. And um, I think booty pocket means something else, man, on the contacts. But okay. Oh. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's a it's a Hout Forty Two, uh, S Sixteen, leverless fight pad, joystick. I don't know what the fuck. There's no joystick on it, but I think they still call it a joystick. But yeah, it's just buttons, man. It's just a bunch of buttons. And yeah. um, I saw this thing and I was like, this would be perfect. For DJ Max, <laughs> zero intention of actually fighting with this thing, but for DJ Max, this is perfect because I can get. What'd you all... What'd you get it on? Did you get it like off Amazon or? It's on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, the Hout G16 leverless. Is that what you said? 
uh s16 s16 okay yeah it's like 50 bucks it's like 50 bucks on amazon um and it's like a tiny thing man it's tiny but it's very well built and the reason i got this one specifically for dj max is because dj max you need all 10 fingers and this thing has extra buttons on it um that are just uh it has extra buttons that you can get all 10 fingers on the thing at once. Um, some, some of these things that I've seen, cause I've been looking at a, a few of these, uh, over the past like months, but none of them had enough buttons. So I would look at it and I would try to like, see like, okay, can I use this for, no, it's not going to work. I need like every finger on this thing. Um, this thing has buttons for every finger plus more, <laughs> you know, you can get like a couple toes on there. Yeah. I thought of getting a leverless fight stick just to try one. And that might not be a bad idea just to give it a shot. Cause like I wanna I I've, I grew up on a stick, man. Like I, I can't imagine anything else. Yeah. But I've heard so many good things about like leverless sticks. I'm like, maybe it's maybe I should try it just to see. Just to see. It's really just good. To, the only thing it. is there's a uh you know, there's a learning curve, you know, like you're not yeah. gonna just you're not gonna just load this thing up and immediately be at the same level you were at without it like it there is a learning curve to kind of wrapping your head around it i'm sure there is but like i've been fighting with a stick for so long i think like i can work my way around that curve a little bit yeah because yeah. looking at it it's like the way the pad's set up using my thumb to like up which would be like jump in most fighting games left right finger middle finger for down i think i could figure it out like i'm trying yeah. to figure out how to like like just doing a hadouken would be like pretty easy i think yeah like i'm, I'm fucking around like pretending it's there and i'm like i think i can make this work um, yeah it's it's really good it's extremely well built like 50 bucks i'm like holy shit man this thing's like very fucking well built it looks really cool it's got this like translucent uh, finish on both the front and the back um it comes with like extra replaceable buttons just in case you break something or want to replace something it's easy to open it's um it just feels good i don't know if you can hear that oh, that sounds good yeah yeah it sounds good yeah okay those switches sound pretty hot dude like yeah are um, those like low profile switches because they're not super loud I think so. I don't even know if it's mechanical, to be honest. I think it just, I think it just feels mechanical, but there might yeah, be... Yeah, it's springy, but I can't tell if it's like a low-profile mechanical buttons or if it's a membrane. Yeah. But, but it's too loud to be like a normal membrane, but it's also like too quiet, I think, to be mechanical. But also, yeah. I'm hearing it over your mic, so like, <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I was no, there like, fucking around with it, trying to figure it no, out. There's no like, there's no like tension to it, you know. It doesn't like click. It just, it's just, um, it's just a real smooth like action. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, that's all. That's all I have to say about that. It's a really cool, really cool, nice device controller. Yeah. And then, oh, I also got like an actual controller. So my my uh. My Xbox Elite V2 controller, I've finally given up on it. You know, the, oh, the yeah? thing that everyone says about the bumpers. And then, you know, I, I'm i like, I never had any issues with the bumpers, so what the fuck? Um, well, now I was, starting, I was starting to have issues with the bumpers, man. Yeah, the left What's bumper. What's the issue with the bumpers? The left bumper just stopped, like, registering consistently. Ooh. Like depending on how it hit it, it just wouldn't go off. Uh, so I was like, I've opened the thing up a couple times just to fix whatever like issues I was having with it, and that you know went pretty well. It's like easy to open, it's easy to get in there and kind of just fix stuff. But um, I don't know. I think I finally had it with this <laughs> with the bumper. I issue, have so. a Gen One Elite controller, like the Series One Elite controller. Yeah. And it still works great. I've never had any issues with it. So when people, wow. it surprised me. People are like, oh, these controllers are awesome, but they keep falling apart or breaking. I'm like, I've literally never had that issue. I've had this for like ever. 
Yeah, and like um, the um, the I also don't use it that much. That's probably why. <laughs> but oh yeah, see, you know, my thing I use it every day, every day. Yeah, man. yeah. And, I, um, I, I only use it. So when I got it with my PC, I literally just got it to play some games. I won't use a mouse and keyboard for. So like platformers, uh, some fighting games. Uh, and even then, and then when I got my Xbox, it works on my Xbox. But I don't use it. I just use the controller the Xbox came with, and. Like this, this stays at my computer desk, and I use it pretty much exclusively on my computer. I, I don't exclusively play computer games with a controller, so maybe that's yeah. it. I just haven't like used it. The worst I got is like the rubber grip on the the back of it came off a little bit, which yeah. I guess is a thing. Like if your hands get hot, it like warps the rubber a little bit. So even if yeah. you glue it back down, like it's not like gonna stay the same. So it comes out a little bit, but other than that, like it feels fantastic. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, yeah, no, it, yeah. it's uh, it's not a case of if; it's a case of when. I think because yeah, I've had yeah. mine for like a few years now, and it's only yeah, just now starting to really. Because yeah, the 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 grips are completely coming off to a point where like I have like a, a rubber skin over the entire controller. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, because the grips are completely just fucked, and um, and then having that that skin over it makes it so that the back paddles are almost impossible to use. The um, I can't use it with the normal D pad because it's too recessed into the controller, so I have to Oof. use it with that shitty ass circle pad. Um, yeah, it just got to a point where it's just I cannot use that thing anymore. So <laughs> oh, that's a bummer. I, I got the um China's number one controller uh the fly digi vader three or vader four i think it's the four this thing just came out like weeks ago oh yeah uh fly digi vader four pro um this controller is the greatest controller i've ever used in my yeah? fucking life dude it is so good trying to uh, see you got a you got an image of it yeah I got, I got it up on the uh in the stream now oh um, i've used uh that kind that brand fly digi i think i've used them before yeah on uh yeah um i think hold on keep talking i'm gonna find my controller i think it's a fly <laughs> digi keep talking uh this thing's incredible because it's you can tell that they've these guys make controllers i mean it's all they do they just make controllers so you can tell that they've they've learned a lot of things from all the years that they've been spent making controllers and um this is like this is pinnacle this is pinnacle controller right here um very well might be the last controller i ever have to buy in my life which I the said the same Digi thing. Vader Four. Yeah, Continue, this one just came out. This one just came out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one's brand fucking new. Um, it's only I eighty got, bucks, really. Shit. Eighty bucks. Eighty bucks. Yeah, and uh, I got the uh, the limited edition Assassin's Creed Black Flag. For whatever reason, they're making Black Flag controllers in twenty twenty four. This is like a twenty fifteen game. 2014 2015 game so i have no idea why black flag is the one <laughs> you know they got a new one coming out i don't know why they didn't do that but anyway uh this controller is fucking awesome because it uses hall effect everything yeah. um micro switches on everything it's like everything feels like a mouse click almost and sounds like one Ooh. too wait let me see if i can get this in the mic oh shit like the whole that controller, nice. just, the whole controller feels and sounds incredible. And then around the thumbsticks, um, that's not just for show. That like little like metal looking thing around the thumb th th thumbsticks, you can crank that, and it uh, increases or decreases the tension on the sticks. So if you want like a heavier stick, you can just crank that wheel, and then the stick is heavier or lighter. Um, which like other controllers do the elite controller does that but the elite only has like three settings you know it has like one two and three this has like i don't know 10 11. Like, that's pretty tough or even know i don't even know if it has like set settings 
um you can just crank it and it just has like an infinite <laughs> i mean it stops you know it bottoms out at the top and bottom but in between yeah. it's just like an infinite amount you can get it exactly where you want it um i can vouch for them fly digi is pretty good i have a um so i should disclose i got it for free uh to review it you can see my review on the amazon page it's a fly digi dire wolf 2 controller uh, i got it specifically because i wanted something for my switch and i was surprised how good it was like it's it's on sale for like 30 bucks right now but i think it normally is like 50. and yeah same thing hal effect joysticks um it feels fucking comfortable i was surprised this is like the best third party control i've ever had so to hear that like they have like premium controllers that are honestly the same price like a regular first party controller yeah. <laughs> it's like incredible to me to hear that like that's really cool uh, uh but yeah the vader 4 pro that sounds i'm looking at the amazon page now it looks fucking awesome it's great man um i like that it has the um you know it has like the additional triggers on the back it's got four of those on the back and then another two on the front of the controller. I, I love that. You know me, I love my like back triggers. I love yeah, me yeah. My, back, my back triggers. Yeah. And, and the only downside anyway. I'm looking at it here is it's not compatible with PlayStation and Xbox right now. Um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, fucking just use it. Use use on PC. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, what's interesting is that uh, the description says supported platforms PC, Switch, TV, Android, laptop. Not support Xbox and PlayStation so far. <laughs> yeah. Which, like, if there's plans to do like a firmware update to make that happen later, that's cool. But here's something no, I didn't know dope. about. Um, actually, the, so the leverless pad, right? It. Uh, yeah. There's something about PlayStation when it comes to third-party controllers. Like they just do not allow they do not allow anything that's not like officially licensed so yeah to get this like this fight stick this this fight pad to get this to work on a ps5 you have to plug in there's a there's a usb slot on the right side full-size usb you have to plug in a fucking ps5 controller into that slot when you hook this up to a ps5 like you have yeah. to plug in a dual sense into the fight stick to get it to work on a PS5. Otherwise, the the PS5 like warns you, "Hey, this is an unofficial controller. We're going to kick you out in like 5 minutes if you don't plug in an official like it lets you play with it for like 5 minutes, but after that, it like kicks you out unless you plug in like an official controller." It's the Dude. stupidest fucking thing. The same thing happened with my fucking Xbox. So like I think I told you I bought this fight stick for uh, my PS4 back in the day, and it was a uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite fight stick by uh, Mad Cats. No, by Razer. By Razer. So it was a good-ass fight stick. I got it on sale. It was like a $250 fight stick. I got it on sale for like 100 bucks. so I picked it up. And my idea was this was going to be my last fight stick back when I was still a PlayStation guy. And well, I got my Xbox. I got Street Fighter for that, so I was like, fuck, I got to get something now. I don't want to buy another fight stick. So what I did is I bought a Brook wingman adapter to adapt it to my Xbox. And it worked for about a week. <laughs> Shit. And then a week later, Microsoft, I got a message on my Xbox. I was like, hey, we recognize this is not an official Xbox controller. We've already logged its like credentials. And if we're going to stop supporting it in like a month <laughs> or like two weeks, something like that. So I'm like, what the fuck? And it was it frustrated me because it worked for like a week. And then I guess like they recently like updated it. So it wasn't supporting these third party adapters anymore. And I messaged Brooke and I'm like, hey, is there a plan to do this? Like, yeah, we have a firmware update to come out next week. And I'm like, great, because like my shit's not going to work in like two weeks. And they're like, yeah, we have an, ad we have an uh, update coming out next week. I'm like, okay, I got like 30 days to return the shit. So I tried the update. I did it. It was a pain in the ass to do this firmware update. I plug it in and it bought me another two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't do shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? I was so frustrated. I had to return it. I was so upset because like it was working, dude. It worked. But Microsoft just put like a fucking 
something on there to like catch it and block it and it drives me crazy and yeah. they're like yeah we we realized it didn't i messed something like yeah we realized it didn't work we have a plan to update it later uh for right now we're honoring all refunds and i'm like yeah you fucking better because like <laughs> this shit yeah. is frustrating so that's what it, so that's what this like fight pad does to like get around that is you plug in an actual controller into the fight pad itself and then the system can see that oh okay it just registers it as like a dual sense or you know like a normal controller yeah it's like the stupidest fucking thing yeah, <laughs> like i, I hate don't that. that's like the most shitty thing like i had no idea that that was a problem on the consoles until uh until i got this thing and i saw that that was what you had to do for the consoles and i was like this is stupid this is and the worst stupid. part is it's not like it's not like it's uh it's a functionality issue it's literally just they don't want you using third-party shit yeah it's so frustrating it's so frustrating i hate it and it got me upset because i was like fuck how far does this go down like i thought about like building my own fight stick and just like Oh, so first I thought about why don't I just like swap out the board on this stick for an Xbox an Xbox board and call it a day. And I was like, well, what if they fucking block that board too? Like, yeah. how do I know they're not going to block the board next? Like, fuck, I don't have a way around this, a surefire way around this without like just buying an officially licensed fight stick. And those are expensive as shit. Yeah. So it drives yeah. me crazy. At the very least, at the very least, these um these hot these levelless Hout forty two controllers, they do have you know you there's a USB slot on it. You plug a controller into that, and then it's it's seen as that controller. So that's good. That's they they thought of that. I don't know. Yeah, for for this fly digi thing, I don't think you could do anything like that. So yeah, I, I doubt it. Yeah, I don't know how they'll come up with anything it does come with like one of those like 2.4 um like receivers so yeah. maybe you plug that into the console and like that's what like masks itself as a as a controller but maybe that'd yeah. be cool but yeah so anyway the, anyway uh, <laughs> controller the, the controller is great it's a great controller highly recommend highly highly recommend uh, we'll okay. see what what time how how time <laughs> fares on this thing, but yeah, as of right now, it's very good, very very good. Oh, that's good. You also playing Hollow Knight? You like Hollow Knight so far? Uh, yeah, I played Hollow Knight. Uh, Steam says I have ten hours in it, which is crazy, because uh, it doesn't feel like either that's a very long game or I'm maybe like <laughs> halfway through it. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, that game's fucking difficult. Actually, um, I want to do an anime review real quick. <laughs> yeah? Complete left turn here. I just want to talk about... I watched My Dress Up Darling. Why? Which is... Uh, I heard it was good. So, that was all I knew about it. I didn't know anything else about it. Other than, hey, I, you know, this is a good anime. You should check it out. And I'm just getting back into anime. So, I was like... Yeah, let's get back into anime, and this was just the first one that I saw. I was like, "Oh, this looks good," and um, it's like a cosplay anime. Oh, uh, which is cool. It's a unique, uh, you know, unique theme, and also there's like an underlying message, which I wholeheartedly agree with. Which is, hey, if you like something, if there's something you're passionate about, you shouldn't have to hide it from anyone. You shouldn't have to be ashamed about it, no matter what it is. You know, it should be. You should like something and you should enjoy it. And that's, you know, that's part of you. And uh, I like that. Yeah, I can get behind yeah, that. I wholeheartedly agree with that message. So yeah. the guy, the guy. Unless you're a furry, anime, keep that shit in the dark. <laughs> but no, I'm kidding. <laughs> the I'm guy kidding. in this anime, yeah. he's like into like dolls, like traditional, like Japanese dolls. And so he like does all their like makeup and he makes their clothes for these like dolls. And he's like ashamed of that. He's like into dolls and shit. And um, he meets this girl that's like into cosplay, and so they uh, he's like, "Oh, you can make my cosplay," and oh, you know, you're not ashamed, you're not gonna make fun of me because I like dolls and shit. And they're like, you know, a match made in heaven. 
But then, you know, this thing does the tropey thing, which I call use a bitch ass motherfucker is what I call. Um, <laughs> is because it's this trope that I fucking hate, man, that these animes do, which is like the main character is just a fucking bitch the entire I time. I hate that. I know exactly what you mean. The plot yeah. like happens to them. I hate that shit. Yeah. I hate that shit so much. They're such a brain dead fucking bitch. And it's so frustrating just watching them interact with anyone because you're like, dude, just get your shit together. And yeah, they're so fucking- passive <laughs> and they let the plot happen around them. I hate that shit. I, I couldn't finish um fucking Mongolian Chop Squad back. It's like uh-huh. it's it's an anime about like a rock band and the kid is like so fucking passive. I hate it. Like shit just happens to him. Like he decides to play guitar cuz like someone gave him a guitar and he's like I guess I'm going to learn to play this now. And he just like like the he just lets people push him around and boss him into this band and into yeah. the position and it's like dude just this is so frustrating, like... Yeah. And the idea is they become a pretty successful band, and I was like, how do you fucking... This is so unrealistic that you could find any modicum of success just being this passive and letting the world make choices for you. That is fucking insane to me. Like... Yeah. I hate that. I hate like, that shit. That's crazy. Way. But th- this, this is, like, the same thing, but, like, it's like the relationship thing. It does this, like, oh, will they, won't they thing. The whole fucking time, which is like the least interesting thing, because the entire time they're, he's a fucking bitch, and like the the girl is like super confident, you know. She's like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna. Oh, you need my bus size? Okay, well here, just do it. And he's like such a fucking bitch. I'm like this is your job, man, or not your job, but like this is what you do. You make fucking clothes, man. Just fucking get her measurements and then make the shit. Uh, whatever. And then they like end up, you know, they do the cosplay thing, and that's like super interesting because the cosplay is like really cool. They have like fake anime or like manga like for the show that they show you. Like there's like episodes of a of fake anime that they have that's like, oh holy shit, I want to see that anime because that looks fucking cool. Um, like that's the cool shit. But then it gets into like this uninteresting thing of their stupid relationship, and he's such a fucking bitch the whole time. And then she starts falling for him, and now she's a fucking bitch. The and the in the <laughs> other direction because like she was super confident before, but then now she's like, oh no, am I actually falling for this guy? I couldn't possibly tell him how I feel, and it's just like it's just like so like, stupid. Where the fuck did that come from? Like, yeah, she was yeah, so confident. Yeah. yeah, I hate that shit too. I hate um, that shit too. Um... <laughs> That's the thing I, I hate about like anime, these tropes, and you know why those tropes are there. It's because the people that watch the show are like yeah. that guy. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly yeah. why those tropes are there. So they're like, oh, yeah. I relate to him. I want a girl to just make all the decisions for me. And, and she's like turn the out most, okay. She's the most popular girl in school, and turns out she's into anime and fucking uh, Eero manga and shit. And it's like, yeah, these people like don't actually exist. Also, they're supposed to be like 15 years old in the show, but like they got like big ass titties, and you're like, age is like nothing but like a number. It doesn't actually exist in the for the reality sake of the show. <laughs> like yeah it's just it doesn't like yeah and the chick who's actually yeah. older than everyone actually looks like a child and it's just like it just doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense yeah. and it's just like bullshit and the cosplay thing you? is the cool part but then like halfway through the show it like focuses on this relationship that you just don't give a fuck about you just go back to the cosplay um yeah you should watch and my only anime recommendation i'll get back into video games but it's kind of relevant high score girl is incredible have you heard of it High score girl? Yeah. So it's it's an down. anime about video games. It's an okay. anime about video games, about growing up in Japan in like the 80s and playing 80s arcade games. And it's not like they make up games. Like they, they name drop stuff. Like the guy talks about like playing Street Fighter 2 and he, he gets a Neo Geo, like a portable, and he talks about, oh, it's so cool. I could play Super Street Fighter, I could play Street Fighter 2 in school. And it's it's so funny the way it actually talks about the hardware and the games and the mechanics. Yeah. Like it, it's really cool. If you like video games, you you'll like the show. Like it's yeah, it's really great. cool. Yeah, yeah check it out. Next on my to do list, I started uh, I started watching Demon Slayer on recommendation, and it's all right. uh, 
I think it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Like again, it's like I I, I realize that I'm not super into like the tropey shit, the super tropey shit. And um, that shit is very tropey. It's just like demons and oh no, we're the ones who kill demons. And oh no, these demons found out how to blend into like humankind. So okay, <laughs> so a little little recommendations. If you don't like anime tropes, fucking delicious in dungeon is incredible. Delicious. Watch that. Yeah. Okay. I think I talked about this before. So here's the elevator pitch, right? Characters are in this dungeon. They're at the very, very low level of the dungeon, and they're fighting a dragon. They get their asses whooped because they didn't have enough food and supplies to, like, make it there. So by the time they finally get to this dragon, they're, like, tired and hungry and distracted. And the main character's sister ends up getting killed by the dragon. But before, right before it eats her, she teleports them out of the dungeon. So their predicament is they have no money, no food. They need to go back in there and save her because they can bring her back, but they're on a time limit. If they wait too long and she's fully digested, they can't bring her back. So, like, what do we do? Like, we don't have time. It took us, like, two weeks to get down there. We got, like, maybe a week tops to get there now. What do we do? And the guy's like, here's what we do. We don't buy food. We don't buy any more supplies. We eat the monsters in the dungeon to sustain ourselves on our way down. (laughs) Huh. And it's fucking incredible because it goes into like the ecology of the dungeon. It explains like how these different creatures and you know uh, monsters that you normally see in like fantasy games and anime, how they not just like operate, but how they subsist off of each other, and how the whole ecosystem of this dungeon works. It has some of the most creative takes on creatures I have ever seen. Um, and it okay. explains like biologically how a lot of these monsters work while also incorporating the the world's magic system into it. So the magic system is like part of the biology and ecology of this dungeon. It's so fucking cool. Okay. Yeah. As a monster hunter fan, which uh, one of the things I love about monster hunter is that it explains biologically how these monsters work yeah. and their role in the ecosystem. This show is incredible, and it does that. And I love it for that. Like, it's... Go watch it. It's fucking awesome. If you want something that's... Uh, goes against most anime tropes, Grimgar is another good, good one. It's an isekai anime, but it's super realistic. Like, one thing I hate about isekai is that these people get teleported into this world and suddenly everything's better for them, right? Like, yeah. there were huge losers where they came from now because they play a lot of video games and they know how video games work. <laughs> um, they could, like, kind of min-max their character. There's none of that in this, 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 this show. Um, it's very realistic. Imagine what it'd be like to actually fight a goblin. Like, in real life, right? Like, something the size of, like, a child, but the strength of a human that's fighting for its life and it does not want to die as much as you don't want to die. Yeah. What that might feel like, you know, that fight for survival, when that thing's on its last legs, giving it all it's got because it knows if it doesn't, it's dead. That's what this show is. <laughs> like, when they finally kill something, it's like, holy shit, because they work so fucking hard to get there. And you see, like, the struggle they go through and they learn to work as a team. It's so good. It's like borderline like the anti-power fantasy anime because they work so fucking hard to do. And it's not like a montage of like, oh, we have a montage one episode and we leveled up. Like, no, like they try and try again. They get their asses kicked. And when they finally learn how to how to work together and how to fight, it's it's such a cool, like uplifting experience to see that happen. And it's and like the threat is real. The threat of death is like real throughout the whole show. It's really good. It only lasted one season. It bums me out because it ends on kind of a cliffhanger. But it's it's really good the way it, it handles its its system. And I wish more shows took notes from Grungar. But yeah, those shit. are my those are my anime recommendations. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. I got some I got some shit to watch. Yeah. So that's it. Um, Delicious in Dungeon. Put that on the top of your list. Delicious in Dungeon. Um, High Score Girl and Grimgar. Uh, I did. I did watch one good one. I just want to say one yeah. good one here. Yeah. Uh, F- Freerun Beyond Journey's End. 
Oh, I heard that was good. Fucking I heard that was really good. Incredible. <laughs> yeah, I heard that was incredible. really good too. It's like it's like the Lord of the Rings, but what if it was like what if it was like a video game, in the sense that um, it like it's like the heroes of a JRPG, but it's like after they kill the final boss, and it's like their lives after that, but also like the main character is an elf, so she lives way longer than the rest of the party, so it's like the rest of the party is like dying. And like she's still like living and going on her journey, and like that's all it is. It's just like yeah. almost there's like almost no action, but that's the beauty of it because you have no idea where the fuck it's going. <laughs> so your entire yeah. your time you're watching this, and you're like they're just like walking and just doing like mundane shit, but it's super interesting because you know at some point like something is gonna happen. And, but you don't know what. And I, that's what I like is like the unpredictable nature of it. Because, you know, you watch Demon Slayer and you're like, oh, he's getting in another fight. He's never going to lose because, you know, he can't lose because he's the main character. But yeah. uh, in something like this, you just have no idea because there is yeah. no. <laughs> I heard it's good. I heard it's like there's a lot of philosophy behind it, too, just because the main character lives so long. Yeah, yeah. It's her kind of reexamining like. Because, like, in, in her perspective, like, her journey with those people was, like, the highlight of their life, but it was, like, a blip in her own yeah, existence, yeah, like, by yeah. contrast. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I've heard really good things about, about that. I want to check that out, too. That's on my list. I just, like, I like fantasy when it's, when they put the work in, you know what I mean? Like, I don't like fantasy if it's just filled with tropes. Yeah. And the tropes, like, write the story for you. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, tropes exist for a reason. I'm not saying everything needs to, like, subvert it. But, like, be clever in how you do it. Like, take another direction with it. Because if I, if I wanted to watch just, like, this tropey filled, like, story, I would, like, I would look, I would watch all the other shows or movies or read a book that does it better. Yeah. Like, what That's are you doing? Why, you know, like, my dress-up darling, it starts out really good. It's, like, just about... The cosplay mostly, but then they focus on this stupid ass relationship, and he's such a bitch ass mm. motherfucker the whole time. You're yeah, like, you'll I like don't care about this. You'll like Delicious in Dungeon because, like, another cool thing it does is that it builds the world really well, but it doesn't do it in a way that's like really exposition heavy. So you mm. want to have characters sit around, like, oh, as you know, and then they start talking about like the history of like the world. It oh, comes yeah. up very naturally, like it, it's just characters talking. And then something comes up or they mention like an event and then you just you take a mental note of it and you kind yeah. of piece it together throughout the show. There are some parts where they like That's dump I exposition. About, <laughs> I hate yeah. about like most like shonen anime where it's like a character will like monologue for like three and a half minutes about, oh, you can't even tell that I've been suppressing my power level this whole time. Won't he be in for a surprise once I finally show him my ultimate technique? And, and it's just like... I, I hate that shit. <laughs> I hate that yeah. shit, man. Yeah, this is there's none of that in here. And a lot of it's like really natural, the way characters talk to each other. And you really understand like the politics of the world just based on like characters' conversations. And it sounds yeah. very organic the way it comes out. Like I'm not gonna spoil it, but the way characters find out about the way you learn about the world through the characters is really unique and i love the way it handles it like it's it's such a cool way to do it um yeah. there are some parts that get really exposition heavy but it makes a lot of sense the story it doesn't just come out of nowhere where characters are like as you know a hundred years ago uh we were at war with this race and now things are kind of hard right now with them like no yeah, like it yeah. comes up very naturally the way it happens and when it does it's exposition just, dump it's a way that's like re relation like relative to the story it's really cool yeah it's the same thing like freerin does the same thing is because she is so old that shit happens while and everyone just kind of like walks everywhere so there's not there's not a good like messaging system so it's like 80 years after you know they kill the final boss and like things have transpired in that time and you know, she's just kind of walking around and not knowing <laughs> or like just in seclusion and not knowing like, yeah. how the world has changed. So like when she does, 
you know, retrace her steps a little. They're like, oh, you didn't know that this happened? I was like, ah, this shit happens all the time. And then she's kind of like complacent about it too. She's like, I don't know. I've been around so long. I, I don't really give a fuck anymore. <laughs> That's cool. I'll check it out then. Um, I've been playing quite a few games. Um, I, I started up Borderlands 3 again when they announced Borderlands 4. Yeah. It's, it's still fun. The game's cringe as fuck, and I hate the dialogue and all the jokes and everything that isn't gameplay, but it's still fun. Like, Play it on mute. Yeah, that's, that's literally what I've been doing. I'm playing it on mute. I have a podcast running in the background. Best way to play Borderlands 3. <laughs> oh, I had a little I had a little discussion topic about... I yeah. didn't put this in a thing, but go on. You can... We can yeah, yeah, as you guys know, I fucking hate the dialogue in Borderlands 3. I hate the story... I hate the characters. I ha- I pretty much hate everything that isn't the gameplay. <laughs> um, yeah. It's just so goddamn annoying. Nobody shuts the fuck up in that game. Everybody in that game is the fucking comedic relief. There's no straight man in that game, and it drives me fucking crazy. Just yeah. shut the fuck up. Let me play the game. And I, w- I, w- I, w- I wanted to say, playing it on mute and just having a podcast around the background fixes some of the issues. But not in- entirely, because the game still expects you to sit around and wait while they yeah. do their type 5. So there's a lot of points where like, I pull- turn a quest and characters need to just like, share their fucking, their fucking, uh, their, their type 5 really quick. Oh my god, I-, I saw this thing on like Reddit, hold on, let me find it, where someone like perfectly described why I fucking hate bo- the dialogue in Borderlands. And it's, uh... A normal line in a game. If you can get some fuel canisters and I can reactivate the main generator and get our shields back up, I mark the objective on your map. Borderlands. Hey, bud. Great job killing all those mutants and all. You're really good at this. Shooting things, that is. One problem, though, is it turns out a bunch of monsters on the planet are going to tear out our eyes if we don't get the shield back up. And it's just my opinion, but that's going to suck. Not having eyes sounds terrible. This goes on for, like, five minutes. I'm not going to read this whole thing. But, like, yeah. That is, like, the fucking epitome of why I fucking hate the game so much because they think they're so goddamn funny and they're not and i hate that i can't just like skip right to true vault hunter mode i gotta play through the story and i gotta sit there and listen to the jokes that weren't funny the first time and are fucking god awful the third yeah. fourth time i listen to them um and but the gameplay is fun the game the gunplay is tight the abilities are really cool. Uh, you have a lot of freedom in how you want to build your character. Uh, respecking is super easy if you want to try something different. Uh, the gear is legitimately really unique. Like, it really does feel like a first-person Diablo, which is what they were going for. And if you like mid-maxing, creating a build, this is a fun game to do that with. It's just the fucking dialogue and everything surrounding the story is fucking dog shit, and I hate it. Um, yeah. Here's my yeah, um, I hate it. here's my here's my hopes for Borderlands Four. Is one dialogue they either need to it needs to either be actually funny, or just re- significantly reduced. Um, It'd be an option to skip or it, or at least skippable. Yeah, at least yeah, skippable. Yeah, don't, don't make there. me sit around and listen to like your jokes when I want to get to the next quest. Like, just let me skip through it. Because that's the thing that's driving me crazy about the game right now, is I have to sit there and listen to these characters just yes and off each other. Yeah. And I'm like, I just want to fucking turn in the quest. Just let me turn the goddamn quest. And... Yeah. Like, you're, you're nothing but fucking loot and XP to me. Just fucking let me turn this shit in. I don't want to hear your type 5. I don't want to hear your bit. I don't want to hear your funny joke. Just let me fucking turn this shit in. And... Again, playing it on mute doesn't completely fix that because the game forces you to like sit there and listen to that while you turn in some of these quests or start them up. And I'm like, just fucking shut the fuck up. Just let me, just let me do this. Yeah. Um, but um, one of the other things I wanted them to add, I wanted them to do this in Borderlands Three, uh, but they didn't. And that's I want them to do with what they did with the weapon system. I want that west weapon system to transition into like an armor system. You know. Like now, because the weapons are like, yeah, whatever. We've done this like five times now, but let's get like an armor system in there to kind of do the same thing. Because well, right now, because they only have like shields and like a artifact or some shit. 
Yeah, the shields, like the a, artifact, and the class mods are like the three things you could like customize aren't yeah, weapons and like grenades. Full, if they had a full like armor system, then it really would be like Diablo as fuck. It'd be like, yeah. I don't know if it needs all of that, but I would love to see uh, more like class specific effects. Because the weapons are cool, but you can kind of change those up between each classes. Whereas with Diablo, it's like, oh, here's a weapon for like the Necromancer that specifically like buffs Necromancer abilities. I want to see more of that. Like, oh, here's a sniper rifle for, I don't know, Flack that like boosts his pet or something. Like, I want to see more of that because the only time you see anything like that is in the class mods. And I want to see that shit like in weapons now. I wouldn't know how that would work because you're swapping between weapons on the fly. So you just yeah. have all those passives when it's equipped or just when you have the weapon out. Like, I don't know how to make that work, but it's not my job to make that work. So, um, but yeah, also like, let me skip dialogue. Like for fuck's sake, let me skip it. <laughs> <laughs> or at least once I unlock true vault hunter mode, let me just start it up and yeah. just play it from there. And let me skip dialogue. Um, yeah, Border if you guys didn't hear, Borderlands 4 got announced. So that's why I, that's why I wanted to play Borderlands 3 so bad. It's still a fun game. It's a fun game. Just, it's a damn fine game. But seriously, the fucking dialogue and the story bring it from like a 9 out of 10 to like a 6 out of 10. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating. Um, it just gets in the way of everything else I want to do. It drives me crazy. Um, Atlas Fallen is fucking good. It's really fucking good. Um, yeah. I was no, surprised. I've, Have you played it yet? Have you played I've it yet? I've never even heard of this. So I guess it came out like a year ago and it got some like pretty middling reviews. And then the game got an update recently called like Reign of Sand that completely overhauled a lot of the gameplay. And it's a lot of fun. It's an open world action game. So imagine like an open world, like near Automata, like an open world, like Double May Cry style action game. But here's what's cool about it. The momentum system is fucking incredible. So imagine like the style system from Devil May Cry, right? But as you level up your style, you unlock more moves and abilities depending on the level of style you reach. And you can customize what happens when you hit that rank. <laughs> so you can unlock stuff like, oh, at this rank, you do more damage. Or at this rank, you take less damage. Or you have this ability to like throw a weapon at this rank. And at this rank, you could, like, blow something up. It's so cool. Okay. And it's fully customizable. Yeah, you can customize it. So you can custom... You find, like, these relics. You can attach to the momentum system. So when you hit momentum rank one, you can do more damage. And you unlock this... Uh, I have this ability that lets me throw a hammer and bring it back to me. And at rank two, I have an ability that lets me... Um, I think it like does an explosion or something. I only played it for like an hour. And the whole time that's happening, when you hit the next brink of momentum, you unlock the next level for your weapon. So your weapon does more damage. It has more interesting combo strings. But the double-edged sword here is the higher momentum goes up. Yeah, you're doing more damage. You get more access to your abilities. But you can also take more damage the higher momentum is. <laughs> Now, that gives you a choice. You want to circumvent that by, like, putting, like, defense ups on those higher momentums. Or do you want to double down, do more damage, keep that, like, damage you take higher, but in the, in the reverse, you just do, you do more damage on top of that. And if you're playing super well, it won't be a problem. Like, there's a lot of customization here. Um, I wish I could, like, describe more of it, but there's seriously so many little mechanics here that I think are really fucking cool. The game has an air dash that's on a cooldown, but if you hit an enemy, it resets that cooldown. So you could like air dash to a, a flying enemy, attack them, air dash to another flying enemy, attack them, and it just resets your cooldown when you hit somebody. It's so cool. Um, okay. Same with the parry system. The parry is on a cooldown. If you do a perfect parry, it resets the cooldown instantly. So the game really wants to encourage you to like play aggressively. Um, it has a healing mechanic, kind of like the Estus flasks from Dark Souls, but that healing refills when you start attacking enemies. So it forces you to play aggressively if you want to have access to healing. And you can put a relic on that healing ability so you can have it do stuff like, oh, the healing refills faster, or you can heal yourself if you do like your ultimate attack. 
little things like that. Like, there's a lot of ways to customize how you want to play. I've only played it for an hour, and I'm like, there's so much fucking potential here. <laughs> like, it's it's a lot of fun, dude. I can't adequately describe like how fun it really is. But did it's I, it's. Uh, did I see this on Game Pass? Is that why it's I on saw Game Pass? It? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's on Game Pass, so just check it out. It's it's surprisingly a lot of fun. It's uh, the developers for it are the same guys that made the Surge, but it doesn't play like that at all. I, I want to say it's closer to like maybe near Automata or like Bayonetta, but even then, it's like kind of a stretch because it does its own thing. Now, I will be honest though, as cool as it is, as much fun and potential I'm already seeing here, taper down that expectation like twenty percent. <laughs> it's a double a game it's got some double a jank you got to deal with the combat can feel really floaty sometimes it's not always obvious when enemies are attacking um it's not always obvious when your combos are connecting there's a lot of jank that you need to work through with this but if you can look past it it's a really fun game i think it could have been game of the year if it was polished even more but it's it's a lot of fun dude i'm having a lot of fun with it so far um yeah, it's... Oh, another cool thing the game does that I like that was really neat. You could get what's called uh, essence from killing enemies like your XP. But you use that essence to upgrade your armor. And when you upgrade your armor, you get a perk point you get to keep. And you can put that perk point into a skill tree to level up your character. So there's incentive to like buy more equipment, level that up, experiment with it. Because even if you don't use the equipment, you still have that perk point from upgrading it to upgrade your character. Oh. So there's a, there's a lot of cool little things here that work together to make it really fun and interconnected with the way it handles its loot, its gear, its leveling. It's just, like I said, it could use a little bit more polish, but I like what I'm playing so far. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm gonna, probably going to play it again, honestly. Um, be careful looking up reviews on it, because the game just had its most recent update. And that's the one that's on Game Pass, Reign of the Sand. And apparently that's like a complete overhaul of the game. Uh, the game got a lot of flack when it came out. And this update um, takes care of a lot of that. So if you see any reviews that are older than like a couple weeks, ignore them. Because this update's supposed to fix all those issues. Um, that was my problem. I looked at a lot of reviews on it. And I was like, oh, these reviews aren't really happy about it. But what's this Reign of the Sand thing? And it wasn't until I looked it up. I was like, oh, this is like an update that fixes everything the reviews are bitching about <laughs> so yeah go check it out it's it's on game pass it's a lot of fun i have i have a, i'm having a blast with it dude um i couldn't tell you about the story i don't care about the story <laughs> but the game's a lot of fun to play okay i, mean, I guess it didn't pretend the story is super interesting but it's it's a fun little hidden gem go check it out um all right that's atlas uh atlas fallen yeah atlas fallen yeah I'm um, also. I picked up Shin Megami Tensei Five Vengeance. It's a lot of fun. That's all I, I would say. It's a lot of fun. It's dark, <laughs> oppressive. The exploration's great. Vengeance adds even more quality of life stuff to make the exploration less tedious, less annoying. Um, it's fun to run around, get lost in the overworld, and explore things. Try to find secrets and enemies, and uh, subquests are all super fun. Um, the, the combat is very deliberate, so make sure if a boss kicks your ass, a lot of times it's not grinding that's going to help you. It's changing out your team, changing out your abilities. The game makes it super easy to do that. Um, you can basically switch your character's weaknesses and strengths on the fly. Um, there's some items you can find to like respect your character if you think it went down the wrong direction. It's the only thing you really have to grind for, I would argue, is maybe money to like buy, um, to buy back demons you've already fused. But even then, like, I haven't had an issue with it. Granted, I've been playing SMT and Persona forever, so I kind of know how these games work. But it's a lot of fun. If you want Persona with a bit more bite, if you thought Persona was too easy, pick up SMT. Uh, don't go into this expecting like waifus and the power of friendship, though. This is like. This is like end of days. God's Old Testament is fuck. Um, it's it's a, it has to do a lot with like the philosophy of the game isn't so much good versus evil. It's like order versus chaos, right? It's like 
uh, safety and security versus like freedom and chaos is what the ideals are. And again, God is like Old Testament as fuck in this game. Um, Lucifer is based a lot on like the Paradise Lost Lucifer. Um, right, better to rule in hell than to serve in heaven, Lucifer, if you're a literary junkie. Um, so it's not so much what's the good thing, what's the right thing. It's like what's the philosophical idea that you agree with is what you play through here. And the game makes it a bit harder to make that choice than you would expect. Um, but it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's really fun, despite how oppressive and, like, hard it can be sometimes. Go pick it up. It's on everything now. Switch, PC, Xbox, PlayStation, so go, go, go play yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, it's good as fuck. Um, yeah, that's all I've played so far. So let's get into... God, we've been talking for, like, an hour and a half already. We're barely going into the Gamescom highlights. Uh, so opening up Starfield is probably the, the, the first really big thing they talk about. Um, their new expansion is dropping September 30th, and they finally included a fucking vehicle in the game. It's available right now to go play. Um, yeah. I'm going to be honest, this is not enough to get me back into Starfield. <laughs> nope. Yeah, no. Um, um, did you have anything you want to say about Starfield? you want to move on to Indiana Jones? <laughs> uh, Indiana Jones is coming out. Got a release date for December 9th. But then also a release date for PS5 spring next year. Yep. So I gotta keep talking. I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. So that was that was so when that happened, that was some of the big uh controversy. People were people were upset at this. <laughs> at uh I guess maybe not the fact that it's coming to PS5, but the fact that it's coming so soon. Uh, or the fact that they announced it's coming to PS5 before it's even released on the the Xbox. So I think that's people were kind of upset about that. Like, okay, well then why would I why would I buy this on Xbox? Why would I even buy an Xbox? And I just wait for it to come out on PS5. And um, you're not wrong, but I don't think I I. I don't think that this is any reason for people to be upset, but I'm also, I'm also a guy that just doesn't give a fuck. I also just, yeah, you know, I, I, I play on PC and that's where I'm going to play this. And I would, you know, that's, the, not... that's, that's, that's the kicker there is like, you can get it on PC. So even if you don't have an Xbox or a PlayStation, if you're somehow still on the fence, if you have a PC, you can already play it. So, yeah. And I'm not even the biggest Indiana Jones fan. I yeah, me know, neither. I just like the game looks the game looks okay. You know, it looks like it could be fun. Yeah. It's gonna be on Game Pass, so that's that's where I'm going to play it. Yeah, same. Uh, and I don't know. It's just nice, you know, the people will be able to play the game wherever they happen to play games. I think yeah, that's exactly. A good thing. Exactly. Like I wish Spider Man two would fucking come to PC already. But Yeah. I don't even know. I don't know when or if it's going to happen. It probably is going to happen eventually, but I'll have to wait like another year, most likely. No, it is. It leaked on PC. <laughs> like, people have been Spider playing it. Yeah. Oh, like, shit. Okay, it, then. It, it it exists on PC in full already, in some form, in a leaked form, but uh, not, like, officially. I don't know what that thing is, but it is, like, the full game playable on PC. It's fucking crazy. Uh, okay, cool, then. So... <laughs> honestly I'm, I, yeah honestly like console exclusives have been a thing for so long they don't have to be a thing anymore so i get it but yeah. if you're i'm gonna be honest man if you're a huge gamer and you're still playing on console you're fucking up <laughs> like yeah. pc is really where it's at dude i understand pc is not for everybody it's not the most accessible thing the the entry caught the cost of entry for a pc is much higher than a console i get it but if you want to play your games the way you want to play them, unhindered, and be able to play them the next generation, PC all the way, man. It's fully backwards compatible. I don't have to wait for someone to remaster, re-release it on my current system to play it. Even though they just announced Final Fantasy 16 is coming to PC like in yeah. a few weeks. <laughs> like that shit is coming soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's fucking cheaper. It's like 50 bucks. 
Yeah, yeah. Grant, I gotta buy all the DLC separately, but it's fifty bucks day one. Like, that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah. So that that that's me, dude. I'm a PC gamer from the at my core. I'm gonna play on PC. I might play on Xbox occasionally. And to be honest, the reason I I told you this before, they fucking got me. The only reason I bought an Xbox is because I had Game Pass on PC already. So I was like, oh, I might as well just get an Xbox. Get yeah. Game Pass on Xbox, so I can get all those games. But but I think that's I think we talked about it like last show, is that when you, when you get these consoles and you've had them for like X amount of generation, like we'll say like two generations now, if you had a PS4 and a PS5, it's so much harder to make any sort of switch yeah. from that because now you're so entrenched in that platform that your none of your shit is going to carry with you if you went to PC or Xbox. Or yeah. Like, it's so much and harder get to it. make a switch and i get it like i went from ps3 to ps4 to xbox and it's a pain in the ass because so i'm like all these games i bought on my ps4 and my ps3 if i had an xbox in the beginning i'd still be playing them but i don't so yeah. i i have to like start over yeah it was easier for me on ps3 is when i got into pc and that's because your shit didn't carry over to ps4 so it was a lot easier then to be yeah. like, oh, okay, I'll just yeah, I'll make the switch now. But yeah, PS4 to PS to PC or to like Xbox is a lot harder because you know that library uh, goes with you. So or and even then, it doesn't you. always go with you. Like it's just that they decide it goes with you. Like if they release a PS a PlayStation Six, there's no guarantee your library is going to carry over there. It should yeah. because that's what kind of the trend right now is to make shit backwards compatible but they have no legal obligation to do that so but their obligation is that they can lock you into the platform if they that's true if they say no it comes with you and yeah yeah so that that's kind of where i fell off too when like nothing was carrying over i was like i might as well just get a pc and it was the best investment i could have made because my PC is going to be with me forever. I could upgrade it if I need to. Even if I upgrade it, all those older games will still be compatible for the most yeah. part. And then most you know. most games are still coming to PC. So yeah. you do get like most, of, like most of that PS3 library, I've replaced on my PC at this point. Yeah, and same. then like, you know, you're, you're still getting like console ports of these exclusive games. Like I got Returnal on PC. I've got The Last of Us on PC. I got God of War. I got Horizon. All those Xbox games are on there. It's like you get you get pretty much everything on PC. Like the only thing you don't get is like Nintendo, which is the combo. It's like Nintendo and PC. It's like yeah. all you really need. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll argue too. If you get Nintendo and a PC, that's all you need. You're good. Yeah. You've got all your bases covered. You might have to wait a little bit longer for like Last of Us Two to come out on PC, but yeah. you'll be fine. <laughs> um, Diablo Four got some cool announcements. Uh, Party Finder is being added for all content. Scrolls or retempering is being added, so you can reset your temper of an item once. I love that. Yeah. yeah, you don't break an item that you got like a greater affix item. That's happened to me so many times where I'd like roll for tempers and I'd get the same temper over and over again. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I hate uh, that. Yeah. So I would hate that. Once you roll on something, you shouldn't be able to get it again. It should be like well, it should work like iPod Shuffle, where it's like there's an algorithm. It's like okay, we're gonna we play this artist. And now we're gonna like not. Cause like they, when it, remember it came out like iPod shuffles like algorithm. It's not truly random. There's like some algorithm in there and that prevents repeats. So if like an artist plays, it's like okay, we're not going to give you that artist there twice in a row. Two options to roll. There should be an option to roll your temper for another one, or if you want to take the chance to re-roll it to get a higher value, it should let you choose which roll you're trying to make. That way I can put that on myself because right now it's already in that pool. So if it's like I don't want this temper and it keeps giving me that temper over and over again, yeah, that's gonna piss me off really quick. But if you let <laughs> me say, hey, I don't want this temper, I'm trying to get something else. Let me pull that lever or and like, take that out um, of the equation. I don't know if you played many gotcha games, but uh, one thing they started to do is that you can't choose you can't choose like what you actually just want and get that. 
but you you can make a choice that's like here's what i'm here's what i'm aiming for and it gives you like a 50 percent increased chance of getting that thing that you actually want it's super fucking dumb and i don't advocate for it but it would be better than just complete random you know well, just <laughs> like let me you... keep re-rolling like the fact that i could like run out of rolls yeah yeah like, that drives me nuts if it didn't let me run out of rolls if i if it cost me a resource give me like x amount of free rolls and then after that make it cost a resource that's fine with me let me keep rolling at it but to like limit it that's gonna piss me off really quick if i roll like four times and it's not what i want every fucking time and i'm yeah. like okay cool this item that was awesome is fucking useless now <laughs> yeah um um Genshin Impact's coming to Xbox on November 20th. You could already pre-order it. So you can get like a starter pack for like 10 bucks and it gets you all the schools at the start with. I saw it on the Xbox store, so go check that out if you want to try it. Um we already said Borderlands 4 got its official trailer, so go check that out. It's super quick, zero gameplay. It's just yeah. it's happening. So we'll see what happens with that. Call me once the characters get announced. I want to see what those look like, what they play like. Um Path of Exile 2 is entering early access November 15th. I kind of want to try it. <laughs> yep. And probably the highlight of the show. Yes. Tim Miller revealed a new series called Secret Level. Now, if you don't know, Tim Miller was the spearhead behind Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix. He also worked on the Deadpool movie, which if you haven't watched Love, Death, and Robots yet, incredible. Fucking incredible anthology series. Go watch it. And they're doing that for video games. It's releasing December 10th. The trailer showed off Kratos, Mega Man, Sifu. I thought I saw Warhammer in there. I might be going crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought I saw Uncharted there too. Yeah. Um, Mega Man, which is crazy. Uh, Pac Man. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. And. It's going to be an anthology series, which I think is the best way to do it, honestly. Um, yeah. Or they can do the fucking Captain Laserhawk thing and just, like, make up their own shit and put all this stuff together. But <laughs> if you haven't seen Captain, Laser, Captain Laserhawk, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> but this is cool, too. Just a bunch of shorts, not shorts, but anthology, like, stories with some games and characters that you love. I wonder how they're going to do it. I want to see what stories they tell with these, but I'm down for it, man. I want to check it out. It's dropping December 10th on Amazon. I'm definitely going to check it out. I can't wait for it. Yeah. Uh, then releases, we got Friday, August 23rd. Concord is dropping on PC and PS5. Nine years that game was being worked on, according to that post Hamtaro made. Nine years. <laughs> yeah, I saw like eight to ten years, uh, which is crazy. <laughs> um, That's man. fucking wild, dude. So there, you can play this game right now if you like buy the ninety dollar version, or whatever the fuck, the sixty dollar version. Uh, if you look at the Steam reviews, it is very positive on Steam right now, and you know why that is? It's because everyone's making reviews right now paid extra to play the game early so of course there's going to be some bias there on the people yeah. making the reviews right now but uh i don't know man i the game's not terrible from what i played in the in the beta so yeah but is it good enough to like take your attention away from like overwatch 2 apex legends that marvel fucking hero shooter i think gundam's got a hero shooter now yeah not anymore. But. <laughs> Not anymore? Okay, there we go then. Yeah. Is it good enough to, like, stand out in the already, like, the already, like, really saturated market of hero, live service hero shooters? Um, and it's not free to play, like... <laughs> that's the thing. It has, like, it has, a, there's a slot, there's a spot for it it can slot in to where, like, Destiny's Crucible isn't great anymore, and, like, people are kind of a little sour on Overwatch 2, like, I feel like there's a slot there that it can slide right in to where this crowd of people are not pleased. Like, that Overwatch crowd and that, like, Crucible crowd. It's, like, right in there. Yeah, it fits right in there. Because the gunplay is, like, on par with, like, a Destiny Crucible. 
and like it kind of you can have that like party dynamics of an overwatch and yeah. it just it just has that where it's like the gun plays there and the the team based stuff is there and i feel like it has that but i just don't know if um if the audience is there so I'm, uh, yeah that's that's the thing too <laughs> i like on all these reviews they're getting like the clown <laughs> the clown awards <laughs> like this is funny man uh yeah um yeah i just i'm curious to see where this ends up landing so yeah i'm curious to see where it lands too I mean, we'll see what happens when it comes out, man. But I'm not gonna hold my breath. It's gonna like set the world on fire or anything. Yeah. Um, uh, Harvest Moon Home Sweet Home is dropping on mobile. August 26th, we got Fairy Tale Dungeons dropping on PC. World of Warcraft: The War Within dropping on PC. World of Warcraft is crazy, dude. They're still getting expansions for this. Like, how old is this game? Like 20 years old? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know anything about this. <laughs> so. Oh my god, yeah, it's going to be 20 years old this November. Shit, man. In November 23rd, 2004 is when World of Warcraft first released. These uh these World of Warcraft expansions always seem like no matter how sour people are on them, it's always successful. Like you just got people that have just been playing World of Warcraft for their whole lives, but just can't do anything else. My roommate plays World of Warcraft. He play, he's been playing since the beginning. He plays it every fucking day. And he came at me one day and was like, hey, I'm going to try to get into... Everyone's playing Final Fantasy now. So I'm going to try to... We're talking about that. But just never. He just never... <laughs> never never did it. Just still World of Warcrafting. So. I've like tried to get into MMOs, man. I think my brain's just not wired for MMOs. Like... I tried the Star Wars MMO, and that wasn't enough to get me into them. Um, when I was in, uh, before I met my wife, there was this girl I was trying to spit some game at, and she convinced me to buy the Final Fantasy MMO because she was playing it. Yeah. So she convinced me to like, go out and buy it. I went out and buy it, bought it so we can play together, and I still, like, even with like the potential of booty, I was like, I still can't play this game. I'm just not, it's not jiving with me. <laughs> I just I like the ones that are more... Um just action games but you can just play them there's just other people around it's like like fantasy star online is still my favorite just because it, it plays like a monster hunter almost like as you get a party of four people and then you go into like a mission and just do the mission or you just do it by yeah. yourself and then you come out whatever resources you have and then that's you know that's the thing uh like pso2 is like way better because it does the thing that i want every mmo to do which is i want to look like i don't want to look like anyone else when i'm playing these games yeah. and like pso2 is the only game that has like the customization through the roof like it's so fucking good like just just the stuff they call it fashion star online because that's like what it is like you're playing yeah. for like the fashion of it if you go on like the reddit it's just people posting like screenshots of their like cosplay characters or like the gundams they make you can make fucking gundams and that shit like the customization is insane in that game so like i gotta check it out i feel like i would like it a lot i just gotta like, like on top of that it. on top of that it's just straight up an action game <laughs> like you hit the button you do an attack and like that's it like it's there's no cooldowns there's none of that like mmo shit like it's it's very modern so yeah but World of Warcraft, still going, still going. <laughs> I thought um, at this point they would be like a console version of this, man. You think so? Yeah. You think so? Or like, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. They're still making <laughs> money on it. They're still doing super well with it. Like, they they they're doing something right. So, yeah. Far be it for me to tell them what they should and shouldn't do. Um. Next, we got. Core Keeper dropping on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, August 27th. I opened up the Steam page for that. That fucking dude on the cover looks like Lloyd Irving from Tales of Symphonia. Yeah. Yeah, you You're see not it? Wrong. You see it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never pl I played Tales of Symphonia for like a little bit. So. That's the best one. That's what everyone tells me, but yeah. I still didn't jive with it. I think I just don't like the Tales of games. 
Um, I tried playing the newest one, Tales of Abyss. Is that the newest one? No. Yeah. What's the newest one? Tales of Rise? Arise? Yeah, and it's it's not my cup of tea. It's just, it feels like it hasn't evolved any. It just feels like super old school. It's weird. Like the Which is funny, because this and... one's like the newest one, but it still feels really like hollow. Uh, the combos feel really... I think my problem is that I go into it expecting like Double May Cry or like Bayonetta, and that's not what yeah. it is. Yeah. I should go but into even... it expecting like an action heavy... I, sh- I should go into expecting Final Fantasy with real time action. Is what I should expect when I go into it. But it's like even aside from that, just the way it's designed, like the dungeon designs are super linear, and it just it just feels like it's from a, like a, a bygone era, where we're like just kind of like past that kind of design now. Not yeah, to say I, not I to say it should just be open world because that's like the logical, you know, that's where you would go. But it doesn't necessarily need to be like super open world, but. Yeah, I don't know what to do to fix it. I'm not a fan of the Tales of games, so... That could be yeah. possible. The stuff I'm bitching about is stuff that people love about it, so... I don't know. Yeah. Um, all I know is I go into expecting one thing. That's not quite what I get. I'll argue the... The fucking East games... Are doing that, but better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, East is a lot more action-heavy. Um, the combat happens, like, on the same plane... As your exploration, you don't just go to like a separate screen when a fight starts. Um, there's no like a fighting mode. Like you know, you, here's exploration mode. You get into a fight. Here's fighting mode. It's just all there all the time. Um, I feel like they should take some stuff from East, but I don't know. I don't know. How far be it for me to like judge a franchise people love and play like crazy as a newcomer coming in. Like here's what I would do to make this game play like other games I like and not like the game you like. Um, yeah, Crypt Custodian dropping on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Series X. Yeah, Lord of the Rings Return to Moria dropping on Series X. What is this? Like a strategy game? Oh, survival crafting game. Set in the world Lord of the Rings. That's cool. I mean, I'm out too, but it's interesting. Like. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that type of game and a Lord of the Rings thing, sure. Yeah, I'm not a huge Lord of the Rings fan, though, so. Uh, Risk of Rain 2, dropping on PS5 and Series X. I've heard good things about Risk of Rain 2. It's pretty good. Yeah, I should just check it out already. And then we got Snezinka. That's That can't be right. Snezinka? Is that, that like seems the, pretty close. Is that the, the catchphrase from that, what's his name, Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory? Shazinka? <laughs> Isn't that his catchphrase? No, that's a Bazinga. Oh. I don't know. I watch good shows. Um, <laughs> I, I tried watching an episode of Big Bang Theory. It's like, it's okay. I don't want to sit here and shit on it because it's like whatever wants to shit on, but it's, it's all right. You've seen more than it's me. Not, it's not my cup of tea. I've watched like two episodes and I'm like, I can see the appeal, but it's not my appeal. What is this game? Like a tower defense game? Snazinka. Action roguelike twin stick shooter. Okay. Purchasing cards and hold the line against waves of hostile mechs as an employee of a private military company. And they're all like high school girls in skirts. Okay. Well, you know, in in anime, your age isn't really a factor in... It's all about what you look like and not about what the number is. (laughs) Can you imagine if, like, real life worked like anime? Like, like the, the U.S. hires a bunch of PMCs to go into Afghanistan and they're all, like, a bunch of fucking high school girls. (laughs) In, like, bathing suits and like yeah <laughs> they just roll up to fucking afghanistan they take out a song in line like oh kawaii desu <laughs> oh man if someone should make if there's any artists here i want to see some uh, anime waifus like no there is a team six in osama bin laden there's there's girls unpanzer 
What? <laughs> what are you talking about? It might even be a game, but I know it's an anime called Girls Unpanzer, which is like, it's actually extremely historically accurate, but they use like anime girls instead of like uh, military <laughs> personnel. That's pretty funny. Um, but I got like, any artists. I will commission. Just hit me up. I will commission a piece of a bunch of like anime girls, like SEAL Team Six and Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see what that looks like. <laughs> oh, this is Sentinel Girls too. This is a sequel. Oh. Well, that's what, actually the, you put Sentinel Girls two in the in the doc, but I don't see Sentinel Girls two anywhere on the actual page. Oh, here it is. No, the little text. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Where's Sentinel Girls one? This this looks like a uh, this looks like a five dollar game. Yeah, it does. Oh well. I'll I'll probably forget about it when it comes out in like three days. Yeah, that's gonna do it for the show, everybody. Thank you all so much for coming in, listening to us talk about like anime and fat guys yeah. before we actually talked about video games. Um this has been fun, man. I love doing this. Uh Gamescom is still going, right? So you can check that out. Yeah. I don't think there's any like big announcements set to come out. Like they usually save all the big announcements the first day, right? Yeah, there's a lot of random stuff coming out. Like yeah. Monaco Two was announced. Uh, you know, there's a lot of like random ass <laughs> fucking announcements coming out. So, I've been I've been looking at that stuff just as it comes in. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, that's gonna. Oh do wow. It. Fucking have you? I don't know if you've seen the cost for. Hold on. Oh yeah, media cards are like. I'm trying to look at like costs for like Gamescom tickets, and they're like thirty bucks euro. I don't know if that translates to like U.S. dollars. Hold on. Uh, the I'm Callisto curious, Protocol huh? is free on Epic right now. Oh, is it? I'll check it out then. Yeah. I will check it out. I'm gonna go to Epic right now. All right, that's going to do it, everybody. Thank you all so much for coming in, listening to us talk and rant. We're on the Discord, so yeah. come in, say hi, talk some shit. Just let us don't let you all talk some shit right back. But uh, be cool, be safe, be nice to each other, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Yeah. Bye-bye.